what's up guys welcome back to the vegan view today's video is going to be kind of a two-parter first up we're going to be showing you how the three of us like to make grazing boards or charcuterie plates or cheese plates we all make them a little bit differently so we're going to show you some of our best tips and tricks to make a really fun snack plate for the holidays or for a movie night or really anything i feel like a cheese board makes just about anything better so we're going to show you how we do that and after that we're going to be tasting the vile life foods what is this called epic dairy free festive platter i broke it a little bit so this is what it looks like it has three different cheeses on there we are already huge fans of vile life cheese i believe their cheese was one of the winners for our grilled cheese taste test all these blocks are meant to be taken to a holiday celebration which is great because holidays are just <laughs> I mean, they're hard for everybody, but especially us vegans. So we are gonna show you guys how we each would create a charcuterie board using these cheeses. And at the end, we are going to taste test these cheeses. It is our first time trying these, so you will get an insider scoop on if they're good or not. Hey guys, it's Nicole. So I'm actually gonna be using a cake stand. I like whenever I have a kind of like a buffet table to play around with different heights. And using a cake stand for savory snack foods is a nice way to make sure that not everything is all at one level. Another way to create some levels is actually to use other smaller bowls and plates and to kind of create little pedestals with them. So I'm just taking a wooden plate. I'm gonna turn it upside down and this will create a little bit of height in the center of my platter. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some small bowls. I like to use different size bowls if possible, kind of just whatever I find in the kitchen. I go on a little scavenger hunt and I find what I think will work and kind of play around with it. But I do recommend kind of setting this out before you get any of the food out just to kind of get a game plan for where you want everything to go. It makes it a lot easier. So these are the three different flavors and I'm going to put them all around the platter and then I'm gonna grab my crackers. Sometimes I just do one kind of cracker, but if I have a big party or if it's the holidays, I'll usually do two. I like to do one that's a little sweeter and one that's a little bit more savory. So one of these is garlic herb and the other one is a cranberry and hazelnut. So they complement each other nicely, but they're also quite different, which is nice. So one thing I like to do is to kind of line up the crackers the same way that you would banana slices if you were gonna slay out the banana slices on a smoothie bowl. Splay out, <laughs> not slay out. <laughs> But if you're gonna splay out banana slices on a smoothie bowl or oatmeal bowl, you kind of arrange it in a row and then you press it down. So we're gonna do the same thing with the crackers. And then I like to take advantage of some store-bought items. So I'll do some jarred peppers or some olives. I have some olive tapenade as well, pre-made, store-bought. It's so easy just to open the jar and put it into these little containers. I always like to have a few fresh elements on the actual cheese platter. And so for this, I went ahead and I took some seasonal pears in different colors. I sliced them very thin and then I actually soaked them in some lemon water so that they wouldn't brown. Although the filter that's on this video is making them look very brown. I promise they weren't brown in real life. And it's fun too to play around with vertical arrangements as well as horizontal just for some visual intrigue. And then the fun part is to go through and fill in the gaps with anything you like. So I'll just go through my and I'll grab whatever nuts and dried fruits I have. I love apricots on a fruit and cheese plate. Definitely my favorite combo. So I just go ahead and I fill in all the spaces with olives, dried fruit, nuts. And this part's really fun because you can get a little creative and anywhere you see a blank space, you can fill it with some of these loose items. Then the last little thing that I love to do when entertaining is using fresh herbs to fill in those really small gaps. One, because it looks beautiful, it gives this very natural effect, but two, because they're aromatic. And so when you're standing near the cheese plate and you get a whiff of that rosemary, it really does feel really festive and elegant, even though it's very simple to do and it also looks really pretty. And that is my cheese board. I play around with sweet and savory. I like crunchy and chewy textures. And I like to have usually about three different cheeses with a bunch of different crackers and fruit slices to pair with each cheese. Hi everybody, it's Nisha. So this is my charcuterie board. I actually made this on the last day of Diwali. So I had some 
edible marigolds that we had used and I decorated the board with that as well as some sliced persimmons. I also tossed in some Marcona almonds and some raspberry and little leaves of sage for decoration. And then I used one of these children's vegetable cutters from when I used to nanny to shape the cheese into little bite-sized pieces so it would be easier to pick up. I just find that everyone's so intimidated by vegan cheese and this was a fun way to make it less intimidating like I did to the children I nannied with their vegetables. Hey guys, it's Hannah and I'm gonna show you how I made my charcuterie board. This was so fun to make. I highly recommend doing this if you are quarantining right now, so much fun. So you're gonna start out with the biggest items first. In this case, that was the blocks of cheese. And I'm just slicing a few slices of the cheese just to kind of get the block going. And then I'm gonna leave the knife on the platter at the end so people can do it themselves. By people, I mean myself. And then I cubed one of the blocks of cheese to add some visual interest. And then I am folding up this vegan salami in fan shapes and then kind of layering them on top of each other around the cheese. And it just looks really nice when you fold it like this, but you could definitely roll them up and have fun with the shapes. You could even like cut out little shapes and layer them, anything you like. And so I'm just adding those. And then the next biggest thing is gonna be a bowl. So I'm adding this bowl and some Trader Joe's olive tapenade. This stuff is so good and on the other half, I'm putting the tabbouleh style hummus. Again, so good. And then I'm adding another little bowl with some cherry preserves. I don't love cranberries. I mean, I like them, but they're not my favorite. For me, I like these better. Then I'm adding the crackers. I used these pita bite crackers from Trader Joe's and these everything crackers. Basically everything on this, except for the cheese and meats, is from Trader Joe's. Wouldn't you know? I just rhymed and I'm just filling them in kind of around the cheese and the meats. And then I also got these cauliflower crisps. This was my first time trying these, which they were so good, highly recommend. And again, just kind of filling them in. Then I'm taking these dolmas, I love these so much, and just adding them to the tray. I feel like these are a great thing to go along with the cheese because they have like the nice tartness. Then I'm adding these cornicons. Honestly, if you make a charcuterie board and you don't put these on them, I don't want it. Just kidding, but they're really good. They're super salty and sour and delicious. And then I'm adding some blueberries. I feel like these will add a nice fruity flavor to the board. We have so much salt going on that I wanted to add some fruit. And then on top of that, I'm adding some dried cherries. I also think these add a nice color to the board since there's a lot of beige happening. The pickles and the fruit add some nice coloration to it. And this is fun because it's just really small pieces. So you just kind of fill it in wherever there's a gap. And then to add some greenery, I'm adding dill. And I wanted to do the dill because I figured it would double as kind of an aesthetic addition to the charcuterie board, but then also you could pick off little pieces of the dill and add it to a little cracker with some meat and some cheese. And I feel like it just adds a nice flavor to it. And there you have it. That is how I made my charcuterie board and it was delicious. Oh my gosh, you guys, I literally have an entire cake plate cheese platter in my lap right now. I just want everyone at home to fully appreciate that. So right off the bat, they have a really nice kind of sliceable consistency. So they're not super soft. They're not like a spreadable cheese. It's definitely like a slice and put on a cracker kind of a cheese. I brought some of my favorite crackers, a little neutral cracker to taste stuff with. Um, but we're gonna start off with the mature cheddar. So the texture, I would say it's like a medium firm cheese. It's not like a soft gooey cheese like a Miyoko's. So it's a nice hearty firm cheese. Cheers. All right, so I've got the mature cheddar here. I've only ever tried the slices, so I don't know if the consistency is gonna be different, but cheers. Let me try it by itself first and then I'll try it with a cracker. Mm. 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 I love that. I love that. I love that with the cracker. That's really good. It definitely has like the tang and saltiness that cheddar has that I feel like a lot of vegan cheeses miss the mark on. 
This is definitely one of the best vegan cheeses on the market. It tastes just like the slices and it's really nice and creamy. It doesn't have any kind of grit to it. If you've ever had a vegan cheese that is kind of powdery or gritty, this is not that. This is like a really solid block of cheese and it is so flavorful. It has a little bit of tang, which is really nice. And this in particular, I know from the slices, works really well with dried apricots. So what you do, if you wanna be happy right now, is you take a cracker. I'm gonna go for a garlic, or no. I'm gonna go for one of the hazelnut crackers. I'm gonna put the cheese on top. I'm gonna to put, and then you get a little sip of some chilled white wine. Mm. I think the mature cheddar is really good on its own. It has a distinctly cheesy taste, almost an artificial cheese. But I, what I really like about Violife cheeses is that they're salty. For an epic mature cheddar, I definitely think it has a little bit of funk that you would get from a matured cheese in like a vegan way. Um, the flavor is sharp, it's a little more in your face, and I like that. It's a very enjoyable cheese to eat. I think if you're looking for a sharp, salty cheese to go on your cheese board, this is so great. And I have to give that a 10 out of 10. I just mm, love it. The texture, I could see if you're not used to vegan cheeses, maybe being interesting to you because it kind of has this like shiny texture that I feel like is more common with like American cheeses rather than a cheddar cheese. Um, but on the inside, it's, just, it's not like that. It's just like on the outside, but it still tastes so good. It's pretty mild in flavor, so it's not going to be like a like blow your friends away type of cheese. Um, like I have some vegan cheeses that I really like that I think are like showstoppers when it comes to introducing my friends to vegan cheeses. But it's a nice neutral that I feel like goes well with a charcuterie board because you can pair it with all the other things that you have on your charcuterie board and make it a little more flavorful. But I definitely think it's a good one to have on the charcuterie board just to like keep things neutral if people don't like anything too crazy on the flavor spectrum. I'm gonna give that a nine out of 10. I think it's pretty dang good and I would definitely buy it again. I'm gonna give the Mature a 10 out of 10. It is so good. I have not found another vegan cheddar that I think is better. It's so flavorful. It melts so nicely in a grilled cheese. It gives so much flavor to a grilled cheese. And honestly, everyone who tries it loves it. And I know Timothy from Mississippi Vegan actually likes to melt this into pasta. Have not tried that yet, but <laughs> I'm gonna really soon because this is such a good cheese. If you haven't tried it, run, don't walk. It's so good. Next in the pack, we have the Epic Smoked. So while the Epic Mature Cheese has a little bit more of that like funkiness to it, I think this is going to have a much more smoky flavor and that's what I'm looking for to differentiate the two salty cheddar blocks. <laughs> I, watched, <laughs> I watched Chef's Table last night and now I sound so pretentious. <laughs> I kinda hate myself. Mm, right away, there's like a lot. <laughs> Right away, it smells a lot sharper. I can smell a little bit of that smokiness, like a almost a liquid smoke, or even it smells kind of like a lighter smoked farmhouse from the Miyoko's, which is one of my favorite cheeses. All right, cheers. Ooh, it definitely smells smoky. I'm gonna be trying this on a garlic herb cracker. Feels like a good move. Okay, I'm gonna try some of it just on its own. That cracker is also really good. If you're a smoked Gouda fan, you will absolutely love this because it has that same kind of mild, creamy flavor, but then it also has that background smokiness that is really, really flavorful and definitely kind of stands out and jumps out at you. Mmm, that is really good. Definitely reminds me of like a smoked Gouda. I like to have a smoked cheese on a cheese board. Smoked cheeses are my favorite. So this is definitely one that I would get again and put on a cheese board. I'm gonna try it with one of these everything crackers. It definitely has that smokiness. I feel like the first flavors you get are the same exact cheddar cheesiness, but the flavors as you chew really differentiate. The Epic Smoked has a lot more, like fills up your mouth with that smoked flavor. Um, it is a little more delicate than I would say if you've had the Miyoko smoked farmhouse. So if you think that one is too strong, 
this would be fantastic on a cheese board. What I'm seeing is that you would definitely need a little like marker to differentiate between the two because they look they look exactly the same. I think I'd have to give it like a seven or an eight. It's really tasty, but all together cohesively with the Epic Mature, it just doesn't like differentiate enough. I'm gonna give that a nine. I love it, I would definitely rebuy it. I can already think of so many ways that I'm excited to use it next, so that was a big win in my book. I'm gonna give that a nine and a half out of 10 because I like the smokiness that the flavor adds. It just makes it a little more interesting to me. And last but not least, now the last one is another cheddar. So this is the Epic Garlic and Chili Cheddar Block. This one is orange, so it's distinctly different than the other ones. Mmm, it kind of smells like the chow chili cheese, which I really love. I love that on a hash brown. So good. Teeny tiny little flecks all throughout. This smells really familiar. It smells a lot like pepper jack. Cheers. Mmm, yum. Oh my God, so good. I love that it has little bits of the chili in there. It's fun to eat. It tastes so much like, <laughs> it tastes so much like movie theater nachos, which I love. The ones that come in the little plastic and you have a little dipping, little pork for dipping. There's a lot happening here. Definitely a kick from the chili. It's like pretty spicy. So if you're sensitive to spice, keep that in mind. But this is so good. This is definitely one of those wow cheeses I was talking about where like I would definitely get this to impress my friends because I feel like they would not really notice the difference. I, I feel like when there's extra flavors like the garlic and chili, it kind of takes away from the fact that it's a vegan cheese. Like I think sometimes when it doesn't have much flavor, then people focus more on the texture and then they're like, oh, I can tell this is vegan. It kind of reminds me of the Dea Jalapeno uh, Havarti. I don't know if you guys have had that, but it's super, super good. I love that one. It's even more flavorful than pepper jack because pepper jack cheese is like the creamy cheese with the little flecks of the peppers and everything all throughout. This cheese is actually flavored and it has the flecks all throughout. So it is like very, very, very flavorful. Wow, this might be my favorite. I don't know, 10 out of 10. I wanna grate that. I really want to grate that over tortilla chips and just have delicious nachos, but I can see it would be a really good, salty, savory snack. It is so good. That is definitely my favorite. I give that one a 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend. I think I'm also gonna give that a 10. I really, really like it. I also really love the follow your heart pepper jack cheese. I think that one is really, really good as well. But this one has like a whole nother layer of flavor that just makes it really good. And it's it kind of reminds me of the flavors that are in sweet chili, like sweet chili sauce, but not sweet, if you can imagine that. But like the garlic and the chili and the all of those peppery notes in a cheese but savory. I don't know if that was helpful, but it made sense in my brain and you just are gonna have to try it because it's so good. So they're all nice and very firm. None of them are spreadable brie-like cheeses. They are really like matured cheddar, which is firm and crumbly. And I love that for them. I feel like there's not a lot of vegan cheese board cheese that is firm and salty. Bravo, Via Life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let us know down below what your favorite vegan cheese is and what your must have on a vegan cheese plate is. Like the one thing that has to be on a cheese plate let us know in the comments if you're new to our channel we would love to have you as a subscriber so go ahead and hit the subscribe button we post new videos every single monday and give this video a thumbs up if you like taste tests and you want to see more of them and check out the description box below for links to our individual channels our instagrams our facebook all the things will be in the description box so check that out and we will see you guys in a video next monday bye bye